the tallest Civil War statue in all of Kentucky. Squire Boone, Abe Lincoln, General John Hunt Morgan, and Gold Brandenburg in Meade County, Kentucky, along the Ohio River. And I got my good friend Montez here. You want to tell him who you are? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Montez McCamish, and I am the owner of the Meade County Local. Meade County Local? What's the Meade County Local? Meade County Local reports on everything Meade County, Kentucky, whether or not it's history like right now, whether or not it's what's going on in the school events, whether or not it's about just a sports happening inside the town, uh, we report it. We put it on there from Meade County. That's awesome. I think that's a really good service to the community, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's been really good. We love being able to uh, give back to the community and uh, have the community know what's going on. And for people that aren't in the community, we like them to know what's going on too. Yeah, that's awesome. So ironically, this is actually the 197th birthday of Meade County, isn't it? Yes, today is the birthday of Meade County. Meade County was founded in December 17, 1823. Oh my gosh, 1823. So before the settlers came here, this area was actually known for quite a bit of something, wasn't it? Yeah, so this area was really inhabited with elk, deer, buffalo, lots of- uh, Buffalo? Yes, yes. Buffalo come right through here, huh? Right through here, just imagine a buffalo coming through Brandenburg. That's amazing to think about, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you guys actually had a pretty famous uh, early settler here to the area, didn't you? Yes, we did. We actually had Daniel Boone's brother, wow. Squire Boone. Squire. He came through and along with his son, Enoch, in 1778. 1778? That's right. Oh my gosh, that's just three years after the settlement of Boonesboro. So there was settlers to this area quite early in Kentucky history. I, I really do think it was just because of all the wildlife that like you spoke about, the buffalo and things like that that were here. Wow. So you were telling me earlier that the uh, area was subject to quite a few Native American attacks, wasn't it? Yeah, so right around the Ohio River, the Native Americans would coast down here, and so what the settlers would do is they would be up in the hillsides, and they would uh, stand watch, and they would peer over, so they'd see whenever the Indians would be coming. Wow, these hillsides right here, huh? Yes, yes, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And you are telling me too that the area had quite a few grinding mills here too, along all the creek banks and things. Yes, Stove Run was one of the very first grinding mills in Kentucky. Wow, and, and, and it was actually built by uh, somebody kind of famous, wasn't it? Yeah, we all hear about uh, Abraham Lincoln, but Who's his that? father, his <laughs> father here, uh, he, he helped build uh, Bill Run. Thomas Lincoln helped build the mill here in town. Yes, it's, it's crazy how that's, small the world really that's is. That's an amazing connection right here in Meade County. So like we said earlier, the county was founded in 1823, and who's the county named after? James Meade. James Meade, who's James Meade? James Meade was a captain in the War of 1812. Wow, did he survive? No, actually he didn't. He, he was killed at the Battle of Raisin. Wow, the Battle of Raisin, that's that uh, famous battle that's known for after the British had defeated the Americans, they took American prisoners and their Native American allies started slaughtering some of the Americans. Yes, and that was a big rallying Ooh. cry, yeah. you know, a big rallying point. For people to sign up for the list. Absolutely. So also you said that church was a big deal early on around here, wasn't it? Yes, four churches would come together and form the Salem Association of Baptists. Wow, and what year was that? That was in 1785. 1785, now you told me earlier that Squire Boone came here in 1778, and this is just seven years later, so population was booming, wasn't it? Yes, it was, it, it really was starting to grow. Uh, I really do think that uh, the Ohio River was a main source uh, for a lot of people to get their goods and then just to branch out. Absolutely. So in the early 1800s, there's a pretty famous artist that came to the area, isn't there? James Audubon, are you familiar? Yeah, I've heard of him, the bird guy. Yeah, so here he would sketch his bird drawings here and then later on, he became quite famous for it. He sure did, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. So during the Civil War, General John Hunt Morgan passed right through here on one of his raids, didn't he? Yeah, right on the Ohio River, he sees two steamboats. Wow, steamboats, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then he launched one of his raids from right here into Indiana. Wow, right here. A lot of people don't realize about the uh, raids that happened in the north of the Ohio River. Yeah. And launched it right here. Right here, and then right into Indiana. Awesome. And another thing that you guys are famous for is the Confederate guerrilla, Sue Mundy. Yeah, Sue Mundy, uh, he actually- He? Yeah, he. Uh, Sue, they, Sue? They, they called him that because of his long hair. Okay. He was uh, actually captured in Guston. In Guston, Guston, which is just a community right here in the, in the county. Just a little ways away. 
So they captured him here, and uh, I guess what happened? They just let him go a little while. Well, no, then they took him to Louisville, and that's when he was hung. He was hung. Huh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's incredible. They Drastic. weren't falling around. <laughs> no. They weren't falling around, are they? No. So you guys also have the largest Civil War monument in Kentucky, don't you? Yes, it actually came from Louisville, Kentucky, right down the Ohio River. It came on the Ohio River on a barge, I think you said, on right? On a barge, yes. It was so heavy they didn't have any other way to get it down, so they disassembled it the pieces that they could, and they brought it down on barge on the Ohio River. Meade County wanted it, and Louisville didn't, so we, we took it in. What year was that? That was in 2016. Wow. And the biggest thing that the area is known for is in 1918 was the establishment of Fort Knox. Right. What's Fort Knox? Fort Knox. If any of all have ever heard of 007, yeah. Mr. James Bond, the gold vault. Uh, gold vault. That's where the gold is held, <laughs> is what they say. Can you take me there? Well, I could take you buy it, but not there. You um, think they check my pockets? They probably do more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely something the area is really famous for all over the country, the Fort Knox gold. Yeah, that gold vault has really got a lot of people staring and wondering, is the gold in there? Is it out? You know, <laughs> it's, it's well known. I've heard they spread it out a little bit, you know, but who knows? Well, awesome. Well, I know we've just scratched the surface on the history of Meade County here in this short video. But uh, thank you so much, Montez, for bringing me here and telling me about this awesome spot. Hey, I know it's cold out. I appreciate you coming, though. Family Tree Nuts is doing a great thing, and I really appreciate you all coming and doing this for Meade County. Absolutely, absolutely. And here we are in the banks of the Ohio River in Meade County, Kentucky, about 45 miles west or so of Louisville, Kentucky. And hey, remember, Family Tree Nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Family Tree Nuts. And I'm in Brandenburg, Meade County, Kentucky. And I'm with my friend Montez. Do you want to tell him about yourself? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Montez McCamish, and I run the Meade County Local. What is the Meade County Local? The Meade County Local pretty much shares everything Meade County, whether or not there's a wreck that happened in Meade County, whether or not there's a, a new business that opened up in Meade County, or we're going to be talking about history. You can find it here on the Meade County Local. Awesome. That sounds like a very good uh, service to the community, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been doing quite well, letting everyone know what's going on in the town, whether you're here or whether you're not from here. Wow. We want to let everyone know what's going on in the community. Yeah, that's awesome. So this statue wasn't always here. For 121 years, where was it? It was in Louisville, Kentucky, on campus. It's the largest Civil War statue in Kentucky. Wow, so it was in Louisville for 121 years. How tall is it? It is 70 foot tall. Oh. 70 feet tall. Oh man. And how much does it weigh? It weighs 140,000 pounds. Wow. Holy <laughs> yeah. cow. 140,000 pounds. What's it made out of? It is made of brass and granite. Wow. So it was built in 1895. And what was the cost of it to have built? It was $12,000. Back then, that was a lot of money. Absolutely. <laughs> so who paid for the monument? Who paid for it was Women's Confederate Monument Association. Yeah, and they had a ton of fundraising events for the statue. Now, there's a, uh, a cornerstone in there somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, if you could just find the lucky one, there's something hidden in it. So I guess inside the cornerstone, they hid something inside a copper box, didn't they? Yes, they did. Inside that copper box, they have a morning scarf, newspaper, poem, photographs, Confederate money, a Bible, and a cigar from Jefferson Davis. A cigar from Jefferson Davis. Yeah, just imagine puffing that, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, pretty old. After the cornerstone was laid, I guess 5,000 people attended, and what did they do next? Uh, well, after that, they decorated the graves at the cemetery. The cemetery was named Cave Hill. Cave Hill Cemetery there in Louisville. There's a lot of famous people that are buried Lots there. Lots of them, huh? I know Colonel Sanders is buried there, George Rogers Clark, Muhammad Ali is buried there. Yeah, yeah. You know, the ladies that wrote the uh, Happy, Happy Birthday, birthday song. Yeah, is there. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So a dedication happened on July the 30th of 1895, and in attendance were 200 ex-Confederate soldiers and a band from the Industrial School of Reform. There was an old worn out Confederate battle flag that was unfurled at the end of the ceremony. So I guess they disassembled it there in 2016 and brought it here, right? Yeah, they brought it here down the Ohio River down on a barge. Oh my gosh. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they disassembled it in Louisville, Kentucky, and then they brought it here and put it together right here. That was pretty cheap, wasn't it? That didn't cost much. No, no, not much at all. <laughs> it cost uh, actually a whopping total of $400,000. $400,000. Yeah, and the towns that kind of took all pieces of it too, though. The University of Louisville paid a total of $350,000. 
And then Brandenburg ended up paying the less. It was $10,000. And then- Built the foundation. The, yeah. yeah. Also the city of Louisville, they paid $50,000, I believe. Right. Yeah. So all together it was $410,000 to move the monument. So if you want to know how much money it costs to move a monument, there you go, $410,000. So then I guess once it was here, the city of Brandenburg had a dedication ceremony. Yes, they had a dedication ceremony to the statue and that was in 2017. So. They'd had that dedication ceremony and uh, it's been standing here ever since. And the monument sits near the historic marker where General John Hunt Morgan began his raid from Kentucky into Indiana. And then you've got a river walk that has many different statues. Yeah, so if you actually veer from the statue and you go towards your left here, you go through the park of uh, the riverfront and you'd see these statues close to the Ohio River bank side there. You'd see these different statues that are dedicated to people that lived here and some of the history that is known here in Utah. Hey, you've got a uh, Native American statue, an Underground Railroad statue, and some other things too. Yes, lots of history here yeah. in Mead County. So yeah, that's pretty neat. So Montez, is there anything else that you'd like to say while we're here? You know, this statue has brought a lot of commotion to the town, brought a lot of commotion to lots of different people. Some say they don't like it, some say they do like it. I say that you kind of don't really have a choice to like it or dislike it. It's really something that you just need to have. History needs to be preserved. We need to preserve history. And I think that uh, if we take this away, we wouldn't remember anything that did happen and we wouldn't be able to change anything if, if, if it did happen. You know, so right. like, it's, right. it's, it's good to have history and, and to document it. And without this, we wouldn't have known anything about the Confederate dead soldiers or any of that kind of stuff or we would have less information of that so i'm kind of thankful that this is here gotcha and that's the thing at family tree nuts we don't try to uh, tell a story from an angle we don't have an agenda here we just try to tell you the facts of exactly what happened and where it happened and you can make your own decisions yes and upon making your own decisions sometimes you got to go out and you got to go see it your own self so like if you're seeing this video now and you want to come out to me county to come look at the statue take it in for yourself Maybe you might be able to do that. Don't just take our word for it. So here we are at the monument to the Confederate dead, the largest Civil War monument in all of Kentucky here in Brandenburg, Mead County, Kentucky. And hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Now we're gonna um, come across and learn a little bit about a very prominent. All kinds of turquoise, silver. Monthly, so you can shop. It's, I mean, it literally looks like sprinkles. So. I wish more people would come out and help us and enjoy the day with us and listen to some great music. Do you have seen uh, the movie Men of Honor starring Cuba Gooding Jr. and Robert De Niro? Heroes to save the children 2020. Just click shop now. And Whatever they like. Hey, what's selling since we have your warmers? We have. I'm sure everybody's following current guidelines due to the COVID that's going on. We are at Market on Main in Brandenburg. Give everybody a little bit of good music to listen to while they eat some barbecue. My name is Kateri Silvero, and I am the post chaplain, and I'm also the steam squirrel for the Military Order of the Cootie. My name is Gary Chapman. I'm a magistrate with the Meade County Fiscal Court. So if people want to get in contact with you, how can they get in touch? Uh, Facebook and... You tell the people um, your name and uh, your position here at Post 10281. Yep, my name is Tommy Elan. I'm the commander here at 10281, the greatest... <laughs> Honey, still in payroll, paying the bills, paying the taxes, things of that nature. I try to learn everything I possibly can. And crafts, you can message me through there and we'll get in touch. We're younger, get it for free. Adults cost a dollar. What do you like about me, Kelly? Uh, the people that can or on our Facebook page at Comic. Today we have an epic roast at the Backstreet Cafe. My name is Chris. Also a lot of the non-line apparel team. Oh, awesome. She's bringing yeah, you food, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we always nice. love the food. All right, how y'all doing? She's good, buddy, smoke. Um, and you do win things, you can actually win turkey meat. Where are we at? We are at. Parazzi, I'm Patty's Papa Pizza.